then the doors of CF Hamlin Hardware swing open for a most marvelous shopping experience. We have the necessities of today, the conveniences of tomorrow, prices you can afford. I'll even got false teeth for you, the good kind of won't chip. When you bite down on the nut, step up, hurry, hurry, hurry. Now Hamlin Hardware was founded 1875. And here we are just 33 short years later, 1908. I am Alfred, by the way, and isn't it grand to be alive in all eight? We've got so much going on. Electricity is going into buildings. Mass production of the horseless carriage looms on the horizon. And every day it seems like there's a new device or invention that comes out to make our life easier. Now, speaking of, I'm working on a couple of inventions and to raise capital. I am selling Dr. Barker's blood enhancer. And what's a blood enhancer, you might ask? Well, on a day like today, when you're going to run around as much as I think you folks are, your humors could get out of balance. The way you're standing, ma'am, I think your humors may be out of balance already. <laughs> this will put your humors back into balance. Why, it cures halitosis, arthritis, fogginess of the brain. It'll even get coffee stains out of shirts. Just $2 a bottle. Do I have any takers? <laughs> no? Well, if you change your mind, find me. I generally have some with me. Please remember, though, if the sheriff sees us doing business, we go in that building over there. And trust me, we don't want that. Now, as I was saying about Hamlin's, it is the largest hardware general goods store in St. Augustine. Third largest in the state of Florida. Well, because of that, Henry Flagler himself, railroad magnate that he is, driving force behind the development of St. Augustine. He shops here. So do the Tiffany's, the Rockefellers, the Firestones. You folks seem to be of the same caliber. So why don't we go in and have a look? <laughs> I would like to present to you the Enterprise Manufacturing Company's Model 218 coffee grinder. Why, just look how small and compact this machine is. It will fit into any kitchen. And easy to use, you take the coffee beans, you fill the receiving chamber, you replace this thusly to collect the ground coffee, you open the grinding chamber. Go ahead, ma'am, give the wheel a spin. See how easy it turns. Look how little effort that takes. Why, this machine will grind so much coffee for you so quickly that you will have coffee whenever you desire. Dare I say, instant coffee. Only $12.80 delivery in two weeks. Who shall I put down for one? I'll take oh, one. You'll take one? Thank you very yes. much for delivery in two weeks. Now this next machine, if you don't have it, I don't know how you're living without it. The one-hole corn sheller. A one-hole corn sheller, you say? Well, you're familiar with corn and the tedious task of getting the kernels off the cob to feed to your livestock. As I said, tedious. It is very rough on the hands. It takes up a lot of time. There's no way to describe this job as fun, but that is incorrect because of the one whole corn sheller. Why, and it is so easy to use. You remove the safety device. You take the corn and you place it in the safety device. You replace the safety device back on and now listen to the sound of time being saved. And you just keep the wheel spinning because eventually the corn is returned to you 100%. kernels. <laughs> now, you know, we don't throw this away, correct? Why? Feed it. Corn cob pipe, perhaps, sir? Kindling for the fireplace. Of course, most people in these parts put this in the outhouse. For the end of business, if you know what I mean. <laughs> no more having to saddle up the house, get dressed, going to town, finding the band, only to find out that the tuba player sounds like a lovesick warrus, because we have the Edison Home Phonograph, which puts music in your own home. Now, the music is sold in these cylinders. Mr. Edison's picture is on the cylinder, a description of the music. You put it on the machine, you turn it on, and music is lovely as this in the parlor of your own home. And I'm sure you're familiar with this tune, After the Ball, written by Charles K. Harris. Sold near 5 million copies of music. Why 5 million? Because it's a tragedy how we love our tragedies. The song is a story of a young girl asking her uncle, 
You look like the uncle type, sir. The uncle everybody keeps their kids away from, but that's no problem for this. Uncle, why aren't you married? And he tells her, well, I was engaged once to a very beautiful woman. I took her waltzing at a ball. I went to get refreshments as I returned with the refreshments. I found her in the embrace of another man, giving him a kiss on the cheek. Furious, I threw down the refreshments and stormed off, vowing never to speak to her again. Some months later, a knock at his door, he answers, there stands the very gent that got the kiss from his fiance. Envelope in his hand, he speaks, sir, I'm so sorry to tell you, your fiance died of a broken heart. She couldn't live, you not speaking to her. You're so wonderful. I pause for critical comment. You're in good shape, it appears. <laughs> but she did write you this letter, and I, as her brother, promised to get it to you. Yes, it was simply her brother. Her brother, oh, home from a long voyage. A kiss on the cheek, welcome home. And, and two lives ruined. It's, it, well, life goes on. Well, why do I emphasize the word noiseless? Well, because the people here, you making milkshakes. Everybody who want one, who has that kind of time? Do you, ma'am, no. have time to make them? No, I could. T you look like an entrepreneurial woman. Formidable <laughs> demands on your time. So just listen to how quietly you can make your milkshakes with the noiseless milkshake machine. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Well, I would hardly have to talk loud to be heard over that. Now, you know, you folks came in at the right time, I think. Well, let me explain that thought. Mr. Hamlin is also part owner of the St. Augustine Steamship Lines. Why, almost every day, vessels arrive down in our harbor, bringing us merchandise from around the world. <laughs> <laughs> We have some fine slabs of bacon cut to order, 10 cents a pound. We got roasted chicken. You can either have them clean or you can have them live. We also got hot dogs. My favorite part of the building, cooking it all, typewriter, sewing machines, block and tackle, yoke for the oxen. And now, gentlemen, I know that I've shown the ladies a number of things to make their life easier. I can make your life easier, gentlemen. Would you like to work with horsepower? I have it for you. That big red machine there under the window is a horse treadmill. Ladies, what a device I have for you. I am so excited to be able to present this device to you. Stay right where you are. I'm going to bring it over. Oh, this is just so exciting. What? I don't think there's enough words in the English language to describe just how wonderful this device is. <laughs> is this not incredible? Oh, thank you, ma'am, because I'm just trying to have a fun moment with you, right? Because it's a broom. There's nothing special about it, right? You just sweep back and forth. You still have to bend over and pick the piles of dirt up that it makes. Well, the next device that I'm going to show you in earnest is going to make this obsolete. Well, almost obsolete. I've talked to some of my women customers using this next device who actually threw this away. They got rid of it only to discover that they had thrown out their husband motivator. So you may want to hang on to this. Oh, but ladies, I don't know how you do it. Your chores still aren't done, are they? We have to churn that cream into butter. And how do we do that? Well, most people associate this. And perhaps I could get the young lady to show me how to churn the butter. <laughs> if, if you wouldn't mind, just a little strokes up and down. There you go. And now... I'm taking there's no husband yet. No. Now, you pay, attention, you pay attention as I present this information for you. Is this Dad? Yeah. Dad, I'm, I'm showing you information. You make sure any suitor that comes calling for your fine daughter pay attention to this next bit. Because you know what happens after you get married and you're turning the butter and you can't stop? A child fusses. Oh, the poor child. So now you have to churn the butter and console the child at the same time. Don't forget, you still have to churn the butter too, don't forget. But you know what? This is where it gets important when I'm talking about suitors for you. This is the old fashioned way. You dead. Let me show you the new way. Make sure any suitor that comes calling for her has this. The Hamblin cradle churn. Now the cream goes inside. And this motion will churn the cream into butter. A fussing child? Why, you simply take this basket and put it atop the cradle churn, and then we gently put the baby in the basket. <laughs> and you can do both at the same time. But this is where it gets even better. Do you think you're going to stand here and rock this? 
goat. You're right, you don't have to. Yes, the goat will. That goat treadmill attaches to the cradle churn. That goat may be stinky, but he can churn the butter and rock the baby at the same time. I tell you what, I like you folks. Buy all three pieces, I'll give you a big discount. And for you, tell you what, you tell any suitor, come see Alfred at Hamlin's and have him tell me the word bananas. And besides the big discount, I'll throw in the goat too as a wedding present for the mo monumentous. So you just make sure he has it for you. If he doesn't, send him packing. Now they'd like me to sell you bicycles. Two wheels, one behind the other, fastened together with a platform. He could scoot around and see him. Think hobby horse here is what we're talking. 1865, they put pedals on the front wheel. They gave it a steering bar. They wrapped the wheels in steel. Do you know what it's like to ride a bicycle with steel wrapped wheels? You wouldn't need a butter churn of any kind. Just take your cream for a ride on that bicycle. It'd be butter when you were done. Then 1870, the penny farthing. The big wheel up front, the little wheel in the back. Difficult to launch and mount. And once you do get up there, if you hit any kind of obstacle with that big front tire, that little tire in the back, why it goes whoop up past your ear, faster than grease lightning, out over the handlebars. Doctors didn't call that the brain splitter. Mm. Now, I think you're all good. This bicycle is going to drop down from the ceiling. As soon as I get my colleague's attention up there. George, George, do you see me? Jo Thank you, George. This is the high wheel safety bike. Now, you'll notice the small tire has come to the front to alleviate the over the handlebar problem. And the brake is here at your right hand. Just look at this comfortable saddle. <laughs> Could you not ride that all day? Oh, before I can sell this to you, though, I'll need to see your bicycle license, right? You, you are aware you need a license for your bicycle. You don't need a license to operate a horseless carriage, though. I don't understand it. I bet you that changes soon. No, to get your bicycle license, Mr. Flagler over at the Alcazar office has, hotel has an office. You run this bicycle to get up to speed. He teaches you foot up the near pedal, swinging the other foot to the other pedal, landing on that comfortable saddle right there, $8.95. Now I'll tell you why I'm not a big bicycle fan. As I told you, mass production of the horseless carriage is here. Who's going to ride on this when they can ride on a horseless carriage? Henry Ford likes that thought too. Bicycles. Now I have another item I'd like to show you. Once again, I can't sell it to you. It actually belongs to Mr. Flagler. Thank you very much, Alfred. You were quite welcome, sir. <laughs> traveling with Trey. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you next time.